Hi, I'm Katrina. And I'm Belinda. Welcome to Crumbs 13. Today we're going to talk about um, the shepherd. And um, all throughout scripture, there the Lord uses so many things to um, visually give us understanding to uh, what he for a richer meaning, for a deeper meaning, and and so the shepherd is one of those, and so is like the wine and and honey, and mm -hmm. um, he uses fire, uh, a cloud. Yeah. I mean, rain, snow. He uses all of these things that he has created to create a deeper and richer um, treasure within his word. And so um, we're going to dive into this really big one. Yeah. Today we're going to talk about the shepherd um, or the good shepherd. Mm -hmm. And so how, how I started off with researching this. So with, with any topical, we're going to be in multiple places. And so if you have a concordance, it's really awesome to open that up and just go, okay, where in my Bible does it talk about the shepherd? And so the first thing that I did was I opened up my concordance and I looked at the word shepherd, just singular shepherd. And um, I found four different words, two in the Hebrew, two in the Greek. And um, what's amazing is there's only one spot in the Greek, it's Greek word 750, where it is actually talking about Jesus Christ himself, where it's not an analogy of how we're supposed to lead as Christ. Right. It's actually talking about Jesus himself and we find it in First Peter five verses one through four, um, and and so there's all and we'll go into that deeper. But there's all of these different places. And what I found, um, and and I, you let me know what you found. But what I found primarily was that um, most of the verses were about how to actually lead. Like, what does it actually look like to live as Christ? What is our commission? What is he asking us to do? And how do you know if someone is um, a false leader or a true leader of Jesus Christ? Oh, that's so good. Yeah. Mm, I'm not even sure where to start. But what I will say is, like, if we start in the Old Testament, we can see right off the bat, um, there were all these, well, a while back when we studied about Rachel, we found out that Rachel was a shepherdess. So this isn't just, he doesn't even just identify that this is a position of a man. Mm -hmm. He wants us to be all like him. Mm -hmm. And so he even identifies a shepherdess in Rachel. And, and so what it was though, these sheep needed they needed a shepherd because sheep are not smart animals and um, I found it really interesting I was looking back um, in the in Moses and they're about ready to take the promised land and um, and Moses actually knows he's not going in like and so he's having this conversation with the Lord and he literally says the people need a shepherd mm -hmm. like they need to know where to go they need to know what to do and um, in finding that account in this intercession, and we talk about intercession all the time, mm -hmm. like we talk about how um, interceding for one another, and, and here's Moses interceding for all these people that he's been bringing through the wilderness, that 40 years, it's the end of the 40 years, and, and let's just remember, we've talked about that too, where mm -hmm. it, it was, they complained, they whined, they were they weren't excited about the miracles that were happening around them like their shoes never wore out and food came from heaven and water came from a stone they weren't excited about that mm -hmm. they were whining and complaining because it wasn't like it used to be mm -hmm. and and so that was so evident to the fact that the lord moses heart for the people he went to bat and saying these people need a shepherd they need someone to guide them in and to show them and to tell them and to direct them because they cannot figure it out for themselves and it's really easy for us as christians to open up our bible and look at the story of david and the story of moses and the story of joseph and go wow to be used by god in that way but here here's the thing um a sheep that wanders off a shepherd will sometimes have to break the sheep's legs and then carry the sheep around his shoulders for a very long time until the legs are healed. And then that sheep never leaves the side of his shepherd. Mm -hmm. And these men were men of brokenness. If you look at all of their stories, Moses and Joseph and Ezekiel, the Lord has had me in Ezekiel 
constantly for the last two weeks. Um, and I look at even Ezekiel and it's amazing how this major prophet had to be made dumb. And then he was told like, okay, you're not, you're going to be made dumb. Your, your tongue is stuck to the roof of your mouth. You can't go out. You can't speak unless I have a word. And when I have a word, I'm warning you, you're going to give the word to people who aren't going to heed the warning. What a way to live. And yet it is good. Mm -hmm. It is good with our soul because if we accept the life that Jesus um, died to give us, then our life is no longer our own. It belongs to him. And so um, the greatest quality we find even in our world for leadership is brokenness. Mm -hmm. It truly is brokenness. And um, and before you humility, before you move on, because I, yeah. I don't want to miss. But yeah, I, it's so powerful to think that. The Lord says he will leave the 99 and chase the one down to break its legs. Yes. And, you know, that visual, everyone has seen the Lord carrying the sheep on its shoulders and everyone thinks, oh, that's so lovely. Mm -hmm. Everyone thinks that's so We great. skip over the, the, the broken legs. But we legs. skip yeah. over the what brought the sheep to the place that it's getting carried. Yeah, and people like to take the Old Testament and go, well, well, he was the God of judgment in the Old Testament. Um, now with Jesus, like God doesn't, you know, he's mm -hmm. not do, he's not raining fire. Here's the thing. God is a perfect judge. Mm -hmm. So to sit in our position, the ones that he made, you know, the, the, the ones made of clay and dirt, um, to sit here and go, we understand why God does what he does, or we want to make an assumption about whether or not it was God or the devil. I mean we need to understand all we really need to understand is that God is a perfect judge. He is a perfect father and that he is holy and righteous in every single way and beyond what our mind can comprehend. So we need to stop over analyzing um, why God is doing something or why he isn't doing something. And we need to stand in a position of, wow, our mm -hmm. shepherd is perfect and holy and we can't even comprehend um, why he's doing what he's doing, but we can trust him fully and completely. It's so amazing because he says, my sheep know, know my voice yes. and they answer my call. Mm -hmm. um, but he, he's so powerful. Like in that way, when you think about, um, Katrina had sent me this video of a shepherd going out mm -hmm. and it was complete fog. I mean, just, you couldn't, couldn't see, see anything. Mm -hmm. And this, this shepherd was out and it was a, a actual this day and age and he starts calling in his sheep and he's doing the same voice and the same calling and it was the coolest thing to watch mm -hmm. like it was so beautiful to watch and it was. and one out of the fog all these sheep came pulling in mm -hmm. and it was so moving to me because I really believe that's what the Lord is doing the this world creates such a diversion and a fog and a scale over our eyes where um, the Lord is constantly calling and pursuing us um, to be with him and to call us in. And I really believe there's so many of us who had an upbringing where he planted his word within us, where he, he spoke his truth to us. And and, and it's deep within us. And, and so often we want to justify going one way and the Lord is like going, I, uh, you know, mm -hmm. there's that holy conviction. Mm -hmm. And so many people want to just silence the holy conviction. They want to silence the truth. And there's something, there's something to that, right? So um, nowadays with sheep, like we can mark their ear or have some sort of marking on our sheep to make sure we know, okay, this herd belongs to me. This herd belongs to the shepherd. But back then, um, at the time that this was written, there was nothing to identify the sheep. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it made me think of like all the things that we do as Christians to identify ourselves outwardly. You know, mm -hmm. like the jewelry that we wear, a shirt that we may wear, the music that we listen to. And oftentimes what happens is um, you see somebody who's in church, who's serving. Um, maybe they have a Jesus tattoo. You know, I'm just trying to think of all the things. <laughs> and um, you're, you're like, oh my word, that person, you know, that that's a follower of Jesus. And then you see that person do something really wretched and awful. And then we go, oh. And, and we almost like, we identify that with Christ because you know 
that's sin. That's not Christ. Like we, we try to take that. We put that on Christ. Right. But here, but here's the thing. None of that is what God says identifies us to him. We hear his voice and we follow his voice. Mm -hmm. Whether we're wearing a shirt that says, I love Jesus or a bumper sticker on our car that says, I love Jesus. All of that, like the Lord says, my sheep just hear my voice. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. And they mm -hmm. follow me. And how often do people use the fallen one who is, okay, how often, let me get this right. How often do people use um, one who follows the Lord when they fall? How often does another take and say, see, they aren't a Christian. See, they're not. Like yeah. they just pummel yeah. them to justify their <clears throat> sinful way. When in actuality, that person has repented and is still in right standing. Yeah. You know, um, I also love the fact that you brought up how we can mark sheep today. Like, we can mark. Well, in scripture, it says in the last days, um, mm -hmm. when he comes to retrieve his people and when he comes to retrieve or protect us, he he actually first sends, there's a, a parable about the wheat and the tare, and he actually sends out his angels to collect the tare first, which is the weed, the weed of this, of the world, the weed, which is those living in sin, the enemy, those who are not of the Lord. And he says, don't mark those who are sealed in me. And so that's the wheat, the fruitful ones. And so the seal is upon their forehead. The seal is the spiritual oil that God has anointed and appointed each person. When, when you receive him as Lord and Savior of your life, as the shepherd of your life, he then seals you with his promise. Amen. Amen. And the thing, the thing is, is there are many hirelings right now. So if you go into John 10, 10, um, it talks about how there will be hirelings. And wh who are these hirelings? They aren't the ones um, like the shepherd that lay down um, at the gate and that are the only entrance. That's Christ. The hirelings are the ones that are hired to tend the flock, to watch the flock. But they're identified by Christ as the ones that when the wolves come, they will flee. They will leave the flock. Mm -hmm. So many times the hirelings are the we. It's okay to be in ministry and to have that have an income. Like First Corinthians nine actually talks about how when you're working in the temple that you'll be fed in the temple, mm -hmm. and and that's not the problem. The problem is is that those that are doing it not because they're eager to serve the Lord, but because it's an income, because it's a pro, it's profitability, and those are the ones that are going to be um, the first ones to flee and leave when things get really dark when there there's crisis or difficulty or challenges or cave to an worldly agenda yes and we're seeing that right now mm -hmm. we're literally seeing exposure mm -hmm. of the hirelings mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's and and that's where you it's important for you to know your word it's important for you to to study it for yourself it's yeah. important for you I mean we bring crumbs but it's important for you to go sit at his table and dive into it and see what he's going to tell you. Because trust me, he has so much more than what we could ever, ever speak. Yeah, for sure. So one of the things we all know, and we've talked so many times about this psalm because it's so powerful. But that Psalm 23, the mm -hmm. Lord is my shepherd. And when you think about that psalm and you think about what it's saying, it there were things that were highlighted about what a shepherd does and he he says the lord is my shepherd um he makes me lie down so the word make means just exactly that like whatever you need to do to lie down and and be prostrate before the yes, lord um yes. as my body it's kind of like heats up <laughs> it's kind of like the brokenness i know it the is brokenness yes it's, it's kind of like huge. the brokenness yeah. there's times where i've gotten really sick and I've been yeah. like, oh boy, yeah. yeah. I need to just lie down. And he, even physically, spiritually yeah. and physically. He makes me lie down. And in that lying down, he brings rest yes. to your body, soul, and spirit. He re he leads me, okay? Mm -hmm. So the Lord leads. But one of the things is the problem is, is that so many people don't want to be led. Yeah. They want to control and be in control and yeah. lead themselves. Because that's the agenda of our world, right? Yeah. Yeah, and be powerful, yeah. especially with women. Like because if you can girl power, to allow the father to lead you <clears throat> is protection and blessing beyond. Mm -hmm. But it also means that you do have to be humble, right? Yeah. You have to yeah. be willing to pause and praise and 
and then actually be willing to be conflicted and be willing to be long suffering and be willing to be compassionate when you want to turn and yell and run away. Yeah. You know, and then yeah. he says he restores my soul and he restores my soul. So that's, he so wants to restore you. Mm -hmm. He so wants to restore that which is conflicted. He so wants to bring peace to what has been conflicted. Yeah. And then he guides me. So it is like you were saying early, like he goes before you. He mm -hmm. went before you. He did the battle. He won. Mm -hmm. And he's, I always love how so often he just, you look back at something and you're like, wow, that was you all along. I know. Like it's incredible for all the times you thought that the father um, wasn't there. And every time you said, wow, that was a coincidence. Wow, that car just missed me. Wow. Or it's his protection. It's yeah. his love. It's his grace. It's his provision. And that is the father. Yeah. And, and it's his abundance in the little. So we see how God operates as a shepherd. So how does he want us to operate as a shepherd? And um, the other three words that I looked up in the concordance were all about being a pastor, attending the flock. And 1 Peter 5, 1 through 4 really sums this up. It says, and um, it, it's instruction. So um, care for the flock, in verse 2, care for the flock that God has entrusted to you. Watch over willingly, not grudgingly, not for what you will get out of it, but because you are eager to serve God. Don't lord it over the people assigned to your care. Lead then by your good example. And when the great shepherd, which is the one time in scripture that it's a, that Greek 750 word um, where it's talking about Jesus, the great shepherd appears, you will receive a crown of never ending glory and honor. And it's just so powerful. So as Belinda's talking about Psalm 23, I'm just thinking about what God's promise is as our shepherd. But then we have this very important instruction about how God wants us to serve him and how he wants us to be a shepherd. I just have this vision of, um, in real time, like the shepherds make a hedge. We've talked about hedge protection. Mm -hmm. So he makes a hedge protection. He brings his flock into that hedge and then he lays down to the guard gate. the door at the gate. Like he lays at that door. And I um, became just overwhelmed as you were talking because I just realized when, when Jesus went to hell and conquered hell, he laid at the door of that gate mm. until his return to judge the living and the dead. Mm. Yeah, that's really powerful. Don't don't miss this. This is such an important important thing to understand. We live to eagerly and willingly serve Jesus mm -hmm. because he served us first and continues to do so. So don't miss all the little things in your day, in your week, in your year. Um, he's just constantly there going before us, laying out, laying out our path. You know, he, when times are difficult, when you're losing people you love, circumstances are trying, like he's already gone before you and he's carrying you whether you realize it or not. Mm -hmm. It's so amazing. Don't be a passive believer dive in. Mm -hmm. Dive into the Father and let him show you what's ahead for you and he will make a way beyond what you could ever do. Some of us are sitting on the hedge. Mm -hmm. We're literally sitting on the hedge. We have one foot in with the flock and we have one foot out. Mm -hmm. But there's one way and that is through the gate. Mm -hmm. And that is where Jesus is. It's it's He's laying at the gate and it's only through him. And some of us are deceived right now and we think we can live with one foot in and one foot out and sit on the hedge. And if you're sitting on the hedge, then you're not inside. You're not with the flock. And you're not protected. And you're not protected. It only takes one thing to bite your ankle and pull you down into this into the pit. Mm -hmm. It's a dangerous place to live, so don't stay there. Mm -hmm. Let Christ redeem your life today. Ask him into your heart. Ask him to forgive you for all of your sins and mean it. Mm -hmm. Let him be the shepherd of your life. Yeah. So with that, we cannot wait to meet you at the master's table. God bless your day.